Guess what, Whitey? Wednesday night, Nolsey. It is Wednesday night, and we still need someone to come up with a proper intro for us because me doing da, 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 really isn't cutting the mustard that much. How are you, buddy? Good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, very well. That's Not bad. Right. A bit cold. Yeah, a bit nippy, chill in the air. It's, we know it's winter time. We know it's the yes. season. Yes, winter has come. Oh, winter indeed. Well, big shout out to you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Or good night. Wherever you are, whatever time zone you're in, wherever you're watching this from, you're here with me, Noel Olsey Johnston. And as always, the infallible and fashionable this week, Chris <laughs> White. <laughs> fashionable. That's the first time I've ever been called fashionable. Nolsey, been called many things in my day. Fashionable. <laughs> I'll take that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You're looking resplendent in purple there, mate. Something going on this week. Oh, no, it's not just this week. I'm a long-suffering Frio fan. Anyone who knows me well, I know that I, uh, I'll wear the purple when uh, in good times and bad. So, yes. Yeah. Um, Today is a good time. Good time. You beat Geelong. Yeah, I hear you see your Hawks are doing all right too, Nolsey. Yes, well, yeah. we have to celebrate the wins in the Battle of the Wooden Spoon. It was nice to get one up over the Weagle. I mean, the West Coast Eagles. I don't think there was much of a contest there, to be honest, but uh, at least the Eagles will get some draft picks. You know, look on the, look on the bright side. <laughs> they might be able to trade away a few. Well, that's enough football because it is the... Midweek Lacrosse WA show here on the Community Sports Show, proudly sponsored by Vision Decor and Idea Athletic. We thank them for their continued support and encourage you to support those that support not just us, but your clubs and the association across all the clubs. Absolutely. Can't do it without the sponsors. Now, Whitey, uh, we've got some interesting photos to reflect on later, but we'll save those for the viewers for. A little while on, um, Craig Allen's jumped on board there. And as you can see across the bottom, if you've got any news or thoughts on what we're saying, if we get something wrong, please let us know. We don't profess to know everything. Don't tell my wife that. Or anything in some <laughs> cases. Again, you can tell her that. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't agree with that one. <laughs> Not wrong. All right, well, Craig Allen just commenting that everyone enjoyed seeing the Eagles get back well. I think all the Freo supporters did definitely. Oh, the Eagles still have a have a place in my heart, but uh, yeah, it's nice to see them get a levelling every now and again. <laughs> everyone needs it at times, and I think they're getting theirs, unfortunately. But well, uh, swings and roundabouts, Nolsey. Swings and roundabouts. Mm. We put a poll up, and I noticed, I think I saw you vote as well, who was to blame for the Eagles' current state of affairs, and universally, I think they're blaming the football department recruiting. Yeah, yeah I think the strategists, the strategists behind it all uh, have a bit to uh, account for. And you think the coach would have a pretty big say in that too. So, oh, yeah, I'm going to throw them all under the bus. Throw them all under the bus. Why <laughs> not? But look, we're going to head through as we do each and every week across lacrosse WA, all the grades, ins, outs, ups and downs and might even touch on some interstate news as well, Whitey. But as always, let's kick it off with the juniors under 11s last week down there at Phoenix on a not bad Saturday morning. Yeah, it wasn't too nippy, but I think uh, yeah, I think the tide has turned there and we're going to be layering up on a Saturday to watch <laughs> our beloved teams. So, But at, at, down at Phoenix this week, we had uh, Eastern Mount of White 9 defeat Phoenix 2. Bayswater 5 were defeated by Wannery Joondala 8. Wembley 15 defeated Alchemist 2. And East Frio Blue 6 defeated by the Black Swans 8. Oh, East Frio will have a couple of wins there. Or well, one win, sorry. Just a reminder, I'll get it out of the way early. Reminder, kids, stay in school, learn your maths. One <laughs> win, one loss is one win. Um, not bad there, though. Um, we don't do the ladder or goal scorers for the under 11s because. Uh, it is just across the board, and we'll build up to that as we get into the seniors. Body. This week, though, under 11s at Floriot, as always, 8.30 face off. Phoenix versus Bayswater this week, mate. Yeah, we've got Wanneroo uh, playing Alchemos. So that should be interesting. Uh, the it's Rio Derby. It's, it's the, uh, yeah, it seems to be the derbies all this week down at Floriot. The Wembley are playing the Black Swans as well, so... 
Well, plenty of action there. Big shout out, as always, to the mums, dads, carers, and those who don't care necessarily, but do it for love, uh, that are out there at 8.30 on a Saturday morning and the club officials uh, at Runley will be out early setting up. That's half the fun, isn't it, Nosey? Getting dragged out of bed when you could be sleeping in. It's great fun. Everyone loves it. Yeah, well, not this black duck anyway. <laughs> <laughs> not this black duck. No, oh. no, no. All right, we'll get into the under-13s. And last week, Wembley defeating Elkhamos to continue their run 17-2. Bayswater, 5. Defeated by Wanneroo Joonlup Red. A big score there, 20. And then the last match, East Fremantle defeating Subiaco Phoenix, 15-10. Uh, or Wanneroo Joonlup. Yeah, this week, Nelsie, we've got Wanneroo Joonlup Red. Playing Alchemos, Warren Jula Blue playing in Shimano. A couple of blues playing off there. Uh, Sumi Phoenix uh, versus Bayswater. When will you have the week off? Uh, lucky parents get to sleep in there. Absolutely. Good to have Tony Barker online, a long time Bayswater tragic as well. Yeah, yeah, good old Tony's always down the clock helping out wherever he can. I know it's not volunteers week, but yeah, good old all your volunteers. Yeah. Shouldn't, should be volunteers week every single week, I reckon. Oh, 100%. 100%. Um, and the other Billings ladder will just run through that. When we're sitting on top 4 and 0, when we're doing like red 3 and 0, they've got a couple of buys in there, so the numbers won't necessarily add up. It's free, uh, two wins, one loss, one draw. And both are one win, two losses. And the draw. Okay. There's a lot of draws again in uh, junior lacrosse. It's, uh, it's amazing how far some of the competition is. And absolutely not just in the juniors, mate. We've seen it across the seniors, plenty of matches before. And rounding out the under 13th ladder, it is one of the Jukla Blue, Subiaco Phoenix, and holding up the ladder is Elkmoff on line three. The voices are not clear. Well, Thanks for that. Uh, we'll try and speak more clearly, Carly. I always appreciate the feedback there. If any sound is noisy, usually I get told I'm noisy. <laughs> Let us know if it persists. We'll try and fix something if we can. I'm not sure how I can do that while we're on there, but we'll um, give, it a, give it a crack. No, we're looking okay on the setup system now. That's all right, I'll let Nosey have a look through the technicalities and that. Uh, it is very disturbed. Very disturbed. Mm -hmm. I'm very disturbed. Disturbed. I oh, disturbed. Mm -hmm. uh, what should we do? Why did he get five? Uh, I, oh, I, I, well, I got to do the PG rated when I press F5. What's F5 to Nosey? It just refreshes. We do that. I've done that. Well, we'll see what happens because we don't want unclear comments. Let's see what that does because all things going well. That will actually, I wonder if it's because we've got that picture there. I uh, don't want to capture the picture. Thanks, anyway. All right, viewers. Well, we've hit F5. Still happening. Um, That's better. All good now. Thanks, okay. Gregor. And your dressmaker, Kylie. But we'll come to that shout-out shortly. Oh, what a superstar. <laughs> this week in the under-15s, though, Noldy. Yes, mate. We had uh, Wembley, seven defeated Subi Phoenix, four. Charlie Bug with two... Uh, Two plus five with singles to Shinna and two for SP. SP, come on, Nozzy. Oh, uh, Subiaco Phoenix. Oh, right. Oh, well, the, so, the bugs were out, are they? The, the Wanneroo bugs aren't working for the Subi Phoenix uh, no, no, that was, system. Sorry, viewers. <laughs> Nozzy uh, shorthand has got me this week. Charlie Bug got two for Wanneroo June Lup, and then there were five blokes with singles. Ah. And... Uh, I think it's Oscar Shiner 
was two for Subiaco Phoenix. Awesome. That was that one. Sorry, mate. Didn't mean to do that to you. <laughs> That's all good, mate. Good to see uh, my uh, dyslexicity is coming to the fore. Uh, <laughs> Wanneroo and Joodle up 25, defeated Bayswater 8, uh, 7 to Rowan Glass, 6 to Jack McCracken, and 3 each for Captain Canada, Braden Hogan, and Ashton Chinsky. Two for Ollie. Oliver Bell with three to Will Frencham all in the last quarter, I believe, because he was he was a bit crook. And uh, two for AJ and Benny Pierce. Well, good work there, guys. 25 goals. Not a bad scoring spray, I feel, for the goalie there. Yeah, look, the, young, funnily young. enough, uh, yeah, Ezra stepped in into goals again this week for Bayview with, uh, with Ben being out with chickenpox, unfortunately. So... Um, I'm sure he's over it now. He's he's all good. Okay. Yeah, no, no chicken pox for me, Nolsey. But uh, hopefully, yeah, the boys will have the regular goalie back. And good on you, Ezra, for stepping in and uh, giving it a crack because uh, goalie's not easy. Well, you mentioned there, Rowan Glass getting seven. He's not even in the goal scorers list at the moment. Top four, it is Jack McCracken of Wanneroo Junior up sitting on 19 goals. Samuel Two Dads otherwise known as Samuel Wilson Banks, of uh, Subi Phoenix with 18. Will Frencham having a bit of a breakout season across all the grades, mate. 14 and Ashton Chinsky on 12. Mate, this, uh, this week we've got Wembley Bayswater. That should be a cracker. And uh, Subi Phoenix playing Wannery Junior. Oh, so, well, um, look, we've seen a lot of the 15s. Um, I think realistically, looking at that, Wembley v Bayswater, I'm going to have to go Wembley, I think. Uh, I think on paper you're right, but you never know. They've got some talent. There's a couple of really talented kids in that Bayswater team, and uh, hopefully Ben's back in goals this week, and uh, you know they might they might go all right. Chicken pox all over. And Subiaco Phoenix up against Wanneroo Junlup down there at Goodchild will be a good test for us. Uh, Subiaco Phoenix. Certainly well, actually, it's about Rosalie. I think it might be at Rosalie. Yeah, look, that one original up team is uh, they're stacked. They've got a full bench, lots of fresh legs, and uh, yeah, a, a dozen a kids who can put the biscuit in the basket. So <laughs> there we go. They're uh, they. I think they're the reigning premiers in the under 15s and. This year, I think uh, Wembley and Warner and Gino for the teams to beat. Yeah, and just before we move on from the under 15s, uh, you mentioned Captain Canada there. I saw some news come through the community sports show feed. Captain Canada also making the WA State ice hockey team for the DeFries Championship coming up soon. So, Braden able to multi school a bit like some of your baseball girls. Mate, uh, Braden plays in the state under 18s as well in ice hockey. So he's, uh, yeah, he's uh, talented in the North American sports, that's for sure. <laughs> and uh, from what I understand in last year's tournament, uh, you know, made such an impact in the under 18s. He was specially targeted by the opposition for some extra defense. So, uh, yeah. Well, congratulations, Braden. That's good. Uh, good effort there. He, yeah, he plays really well at both sports. So, yeah, multi-skilled, multi-talented athlete. Good on him. A bit like us. Uh, multi-skilled. If you combine no, no, us. Yeah, if you combine us. We've got two skills between us, Noldy. <laughs> <laughs> That's multi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you put a multi on it at CAB, it's at least two. Uh, look, under 17 men's moving on because we are cheeky. Uh, plenty of comments coming in there. Uh, I'm not sure what Harry said there. It's hiding behind the camera tripod, but uh, hopefully you're all able to hear us. We'll kick on. Under 17 men last week, Wembley 8 defeated by Phoenix. Uh, defeated, I should no Defeated by mm. uh, Subiaco Phoenix or Phoenix Subiaco. They're reversing them in that grade. 8 9, so a good win there to Phoenix Subiaco uh, for. Wembley, Luca Dillon with three, and John Narby, he's a name we hear quite often, and I think an up-and-coming talent. Absolutely. Him and Charlie Clark both with two, while for Phoenix, Subiaco, Oliver Bolu and Cade Moyer with three, and Samuel Wilson-Banks backing it up. Yeah, that's a good two. win from, from Subi Phoenix. 
you know, they'd be, they'd be very happy to get over over Wembley. Wembley's a very strong team. Um, yeah, they've got some really good high end talent and a, and a really good goalie in the in the cage there in uh, Ruben. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's a that's a pretty big win by Subi Phoenix. It was great. Ruben man, a solid wall there, hundred mm, percent. Meanwhile, the next game, your boys, big win. Yeah, Basie fourteen defeated Wanderers June Love eight. Uh, Clancy and well, Will Clancy Buckley and Will Frensham. Uh, both put uh, five in the back of the net each. Uh, Will put four of those in the first quarter. He's, I think he scored the first four goals of the game, uh, or the first four goals for Bayswater, sort of definitely just being in the right place at the right time. And it's good to see the Bayswater boys moving the ball quickly. And uh, Will was the beneficiary of, of that. Uh, yeah, Mitch put two, whilst uh, Braden Hogan and Josh Jorgensen and Aaron, Adam Gerardian all put away two each for one or a junior. Like, they had some. Big names to watch there for Wanneroo Genoff as well. Those, those three are, are talented lacrosse players. So, I'm looking forward to seeing them come through the grades. Well, we have an opportunity. We should also um, thank someone you put in touch with me, came down and visited on Saturday at East Fremantle. Big shout out to Gordon Hill, big tall fellow with a thick Irish accent. I wondered who he was for a moment. <laughs> Uh, but a big shout out to Tyler Hill's dad, Gordon, who came to visit because I'm close to report, Whitey. There's a new shirt in the studio here. Ta da! Well, actually, it's just hidden behind your lovely con there. Right. There it is. Well, the Warriors. The Warriors shirt. There we go. Oh, Thanks, baby. Gordon. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you. All right, mate. It's all good. It's all about placement, and I should have done that better. But yeah, I was no. more worried about the Hawthorne jumper. Well, <laughs> Last minute studio changes. Yes, well, it is that time of year <laughs> where we get to stir up people on a, a number of fields. Um, yeah, no, Tyler's, Tyler's one of the yeah um, really skilled young defenders up at Wanneroo Joodle Up. Um, you know, he's been playing a bit of state league this year as well, uh, running off a wing there. Um, yeah, big future. We don't talk about the defenders along sticks enough. I don't think it's just the goals and the, the glory boys up forward, but the, the engine room behind them are, are all the defenders and, and he's a really good one. Keep your eye on that name moving forward. How can we uh, create a Defenders Award? Uh, um, just anyone who plays long stick, they must be a champion. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. like a long, true long pole. I, oh, I, I, I might have played a bit of long pole. That might have been the only position I played. But yes. Oh, well, yeah. cool. so, but no, no. Um, yeah, good on Gordon for getting down the supporting. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks very much, Gordon. Um, and goal scorers in the under 17 for the men, while well, it's Charlie Clark of Wembley currently leading with three assists and 13 goals in just three games. Not a bad performance by young Charlie. Yeah, he's a quality player. And I think he's also really smart about how he goes about his lacrosse. And I, I have a sneaky suspicion he's bringing the rest of his teammates into the game in the under 17s. And uh, he might be taking his foot off the pedal as far as putting the biscuit in the basket is concerned but you know definitely getting his teammates involved and and you know bringing them up with him which is which is great to see absolutely alex mcbean of bayswater with four assists so he's got the idea of sharing it around as well um 10 goals to his name and oliver bolu of phoenix subiaco rounding out the top three with 10 Yes, it's good to see the string being with the ball in uh, in hand because he's uh, got a nice shot on him and uh, picks corners, picks corners for fun. So, because oh, well. he designate corners, so I don't think he calls them. Otherwise, the goalies might have a bit of an advantage. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, he likes his spot on the bottom left uh, for the lefty corner, and uh, yeah, he's a bit of a sniper there. So you know, get it, shoot it, pick the corners. It's uh, great to watch. Interesting to see. Well. Bayswater sitting on top of the ladder this week up against Wembley. You mentioned some good players in there for Wembley, but Bayswater also is quite serviceable. Uh, yeah, they go all right, the, the Bayswater boys. But we did lose to Wembley last time we played them. Uh, so, you know, it's, um, you know, Wembley were at bogey side last year as well. Okay. Um, so they, they, didn't, they, I think they beat Wembley once last year um, in the regular season and lost to them in the grand final in the under 17s. So, yeah, let's see if the boys can uh, work through their demons and, and see where we end up on Saturday. Well, despite Wanneroo June Love having that uh, firepower there of Hogan and Jerry Jan, um, they are sitting on the bottom of the ladder at the moment. 
no wins to their name, just the one loss and two draws yes. up against Phoenix. It'll be echoed this week. Should be a good game. Well, if you think, you know, one goal, uh, you know, either way in a couple of games and next thing you know, they're sitting on uh, 10 or 12 points and they're at the top of the ladder. So it just goes to show you how really tight this, this grade is. So anything could happen. All right. Well, let's kick it off. That's the junior men, although I think 17s. Oh, actually, they are junior men because half of them are 15. <laughs> yeah, look, they, they play full men's rules in under 17s. So, yeah, yeah well, I think we go away with calling them junior men. <laughs> oh, well, on to the junior women now. Uh, under 14s last week, East Fremantle having to buy a couple of games um, took place. What would we go with the first one there? Mate, Wannery Joondal up uh, defeated two, were defeated by Bayswater 12. I uh, caught the last half of this game, and uh, yeah, the Bayswater girls were quite, quite dominant, especially through the middle. There's some really athletic, really athletic uh, girls running through there with some uh, great skills. Uh, young Hattie really got uh, four, and uh, thanks to Kylie for the two-two, which we'll see uh, pictures of two ladies shortly coming up. Oh, I do. I keep telling people I look good in a dress, and uh, now I've got pictures to prove it. Mm, I'm not sure it can <laughs> does a dress, but anyway, we'll uh, argue that to us when the picture comes up. <laughs> uh, um, Sophie McBean put three away and two for Chanel Agar, Jemmy Jobson, and Zach Knoll. Is that Cadell? Cadell? Yeah, Cadell or Wanneroo Gin Love. There's that tongue twisting again. I was That's right, every my week. Fault, mate. Uh, for Wanneroo Gin Love. Yeah, that was um, yeah, that was an entertaining game. So, oh, lots of lots of scoring there. Uh, we saw Addie's mum Kylie online before, so thanks for joining us, each and every one of you online there tonight. Um, good to have big numbers as always. In the other under 14s, it was a draw. Phoenix. 10 drew with Wembley 10. No information, unfortunately, for Wembley, so we can't give them any shout outs at all. Um, however, for Phoenix, it was Elizabeth, Elizabeth now, I'm in the <laughs> Which is a daughter of a gun, Elizabeth Bruce with four. And Amelia Walker with three for Phoenix there. Um, ladder looking pretty confident. Bayswater on top. Yeah, they're on top with three wins, no losses, and a pretty big percentage there. Want to up? Uh, they're running second with three wins and one loss. I think Bayswater had the buy already. Uh, followed by Phoenix, a one win, one loss, one draw. A Wembley, uh, two losses and one draw. And East Frio without notching a W in the column this week. What's that, Phoenix, mate? Mm. Who's, who's got who? Mate, East Rio got Wembley. Uh, Phoenix are playing Bayswater and Wanneroo Joondal up have the bye. Mm, okay. Well, match of the round would have to be Phoenix, Bayswater, two or one v three, I reckon. Yeah, look, I, 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 it's a big call, but I, I don't see the Bayswater girls, the depth they've got there, they're, they're, they're really well coached, they're really well drilled. They're sharing the ball around. It's great to see. Um, yeah, I reckon Basie going going to get up there. And uh, in the other game, Nolsey, uh, for looking for their first win of the season, East Free or Wembley. Wow. You'd like to... Well, this one really is... I'm going to go East Free. Well, I'll have to go Wembley then, Nolsey. We'll see next week uh, okay. how we're sitting there. Be careful what we <laughs> wager on that one later. We, uh, I don't know enough about the junior women to call that one, so I think I'll let it go. <laughs> now, we've got some comments coming through there. Angelina, let's pull that up. Not enough players at Phoenix for a team, unfortunately. Yeah, I think the um, the team with the buy or sense the Phoenix have a, have a core group of players, just not enough to get a team up. So uh, the team with the buy sends some players over who want to who want a bit of a run, and uh, they jump in with the Phoenix girls and and uh, yeah have a have a great time. Well, on that note, then if there's anyone watching down in the Phoenix Beerwood Southern Suburbs area, and you want to give a new sport a crack, why not get involved with the Phoenix Lacrosse Club and. You know, it's uh, we've been down there. Good facilities, good people. 
fantastic lights there, mate. Fantastic lights. Not bad. Might get a game under lights there, you know. Yeah. Great new club room. And, uh, yeah, they're always a good friendly bunch down at Phoenix. It's, uh, yeah, quality place to play lacrosse. So get on down. Get on down to not just Phoenix, but all clubs looking for players across all grades. Um, so if you want to try lacrosse, head down to your local club and you could be out on the paddock this weekend. Absolutely. Why not? Mate, the under-17s women's, uh, we had uh, East Fremantle 4, defeated by Wembley 10. Uh, Talia Edwards, Sophie, I'm going to get my tongue in a knot here again, Brigitte, and Zoe Chovanoff with two apiece for Wembley. And East Fremantle, Isla Emerson had three of the four goals. Not bad by Isla there. Yeah. She's having some impact as well. Absolutely. And in the game that I saw, Phoenix 9 were defeated by Bayswater 13. Uh, Freya, Freya Payne and Trinity Ann Walker both with two for Phoenix. And uh, we heard this name a few times. One so, twice. Sophie, well, the, the last name, Sophie McBean and Addison Reardon with three each. Veronica with two. So Just a quiet week for Miss Keane there. Yeah, Addie, Addie putting the ball in the back of the net in both grades along with... Uh, the string beans getting their names on the scoreboard this week. Well, it's great both the see. men's and the women's. Good to see, very definitely. And the McBeans long connected to the sport. So a big shout out to all of them connected to the Morleys, I believe. Correct. Um, so the ladder for the under 17 women, Bayswater, as you'd expect, sitting on top, undefeated on three wins. Phoenix, Wembley, Wanneroo, Joonlup, and rounding out the Top five, it is East Fremantle. Yeah, as you said, yet to get the W. Again, that's going to be an interesting, interesting ladder. An interesting time come final time with with Phoenix having to draw on a couple of players from here and there uh, to get through. We'll see what happens there. We'll the <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate, with the with the goals, we got Chloe Duckworth on seventeen from Water June Love. Sophie Birigetti's got thirteen of Wembley. And Freya Payne with 10 for Phoenix. <laughs> uh, this week in the under-17 ladies, it is Wanneroo Joomlup up against Bayswater. Uh, we'll give a tip as we go through your... Um... I don't see the Basie girls losing uh, any games because I've got uh, the eye patch on and one eye showing there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but You're allowed. Phoenix and Wembley, um, that'll be... That's 2v3, so... That'll be um, that'll be an interesting interesting match. So, you know, I reckon that's gonna might throw some catters amongst the pigeons, but I think Wembley will probably get up there. Well, that's just a guess. Both on two wins and one loss, so really this is an opportunity for whoever wins to go one game clear there. So, uh, you're going Wembley. I don't want to be the contrary selector here I think at Phoenix I'm um, going to go Phoenix there we go although I am being contrary East Fremantle enjoying the bye in the under 17s this weekend just slide that up there alright here we go this is the one we've been waiting for viewers big crowd last week from Alchemos online for their win and they continued their form unbeaten streak going here Nelsie yes yeah Nine all draw with Wanneroo Joonlup, the name we've heard quite often each and every week. Mara Crane with five, two to uh, Kirsten Smedley and Shayana Tawney for Alchemos. Mate, for uh, Wanneroo Joonlup, uh, we had three to Jam Jam Jamison May. And uh, is that her real name, Jam Jam? No, that's just. <laughs> I just, I just give you a hard time because I can. Um, and we had two, two, Chloe and Megan. Well, congratulations there. As you say, undefeated streak now. Alchemos, they got the win off their back. Mm. And they knows. can't seem to lose. Let's see if they can keep the streak going. Well, they've moved off the bottom of the ladder, and that's a great, great sign. But we'll come to that in a moment. <laughs> Wembley 12, defeating Bayswater 4. For Wembley, three to Madison Carroll, doubles to Stephanie McRae, Ella Rose, and both Samara and Jen Edwards getting two each for Wembley there. Nice. Well, for Bayswater, three to Coda Jobson, 
and the single going to Catherine Kenter. I believe that was uh, Catherine's first goal too. I was think it? I think she's playing her first season of lacrosse. And it was great to see her uh, catch one on the crease and put the biscuit in the basket. It was fantastic. Now, uh, is this a game you cheered them on? Yeah, it might have been, and I'm sure you're about to show the photo, which I, I think Bayswater has shared far and wide in their socials this week. So, uh, <laughs> And I'm pretty sure I put it on the uh, community sports show you, <laughs> page you, as you well. did, <laughs> but for all those that missed it, yeah. here we go. This is perhaps. I'm not saying it is. Well. They might have been distracted because this is what was cheering them <laughs> on. Good, oh, good work there, mate. You big, honoured your word. Big shout out to young Mitchell, who uh, under a bit of duress, uh, <laughs> yeah, chucked the uh, chucked the uh, pom pom and uh, tutu on, and uh, had a good cheer for me, with me, I should say. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, the first half of that game, uh, we didn't have much to cheer about because the Basie girls didn't get on the board till the third quarter. But then, uh, yeah, Coda put three away in in the third quarter, and uh, that got us up and about. And, uh, you know, I don't think she was very impressed by our cheering. So <laughs> <laughs> she ran very quickly back to the middle. Let's get the game going again. <laughs> well, it's interesting because, as you say, you posted up on the socials and there was a few people suggesting they might like to see you every week in that gear. Is there any chance? Um, well, that no. <laughs> 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 there was more thought in that than I expected. <laughs> well, for a price, anything could happen, but no, no. I, uh, I don't, yeah, no, we, we might save the two twos for finals time. We'll, we'll see how we go. We we'll see two, how we two, go. Two twos save for a special occasion. <laughs> All right. And in the last match, East Freeman, unfortunately, succumbing to the lack of numbers here, forfeiting to Subiaco Phoenix. So, Subiaco Phoenix, as a result, it clear on top. Three wins, one loss. Mm. That's all right. I had to they take that. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. Uh, Wembley, just one point behind. Two wins, one loss, one draw. One Rujun Lup. East Fremantle, the Pirates. Arr, arr, arr. Um, off the bottom, and I hate to say it, mate, but your cheering has had a negative effect and those two have swapped places baseball to round and out the table yeah unfortunately they're uh you know my cheering might get them up next week the percentage is not too bad so no and you know we uh, you know the girls are getting out there every week and giving it a fair crack so uh, their turn will come and it could even be next week when they play one or a junior at nolsey could well be yeah. um because well yeah this week one or a June map up against Bayswater. They won one, one win. One, they've only had one win this season, but they've had a couple of draws. So, you know, percentage comparable, just absolutely ten percent between the two sides there. I want to return up sitting third. You know, again, it shows how tight that it can be, and a goal here or there could could be the difference. But I'll uh, back the Basie girls to get on top for that one. Well, speaking of goals, it is Mara Crane leading the Div Two women with twelve. Angela Somerville at Subiaco Phoenix behind her on 11. Or just uh, Jonica Kennedy and Megan Shanks both on 10 to make it a tight competition there. Um, Alkamos up against East Fremantle. This one, East Fremantle 2 and 1, Alkamos on a roll. Go oh, the Pirates. The Pirates undefeated in the last couple of weeks. So I reckon they're going to keep their roll going. Back to form. Back Absolutely. To form. Uh, Subi Phoenix v Wembley. This one, um, top of the table clash. Yeah, that'll be interesting. The Wembley girls were really quick. That was um, they they ran you know that was just quick ran over ran over our girls with a bit of speed there. So I reckon that they might do the same to Subi Phoenix. You never know. Oh well, there you go. I'm going to go Subi Phoenix just because they're on top of the table. And I seem to be the opposition tonight, so <laughs> back, I mean, back the underdogs, Nolly. Un unintentionally, yes. All right, so from the women's div two into the women's state league, it was at Wembley, Florida last week, and some interesting results here. Um, we'll start at the bottom because we mentioned forfeits. Wembley getting the win 10 0 over Phoenix due to a forfeit, so. Yeah, look, I, I'll say this because there's some more forfeits coming up, but it, it's been 
yeah, I think it's been a bit disappointing this year with the amount of forfeits that we're having. And I'm, I know there's reasons here and there, um, but maybe, maybe, I know we need to be a bit more realistic at the start of the year and say, look, we've got three quarters of a team. You've got three quarters of a team. Let's do something together and let's, you know, let's get lacrosse happening yeah. every week. Uh, you know, I think I know the Basie Div 3 boys have only played once this year so far and we're up to around five, I think, yes, this year. Really, you know, yeah. we, we were guilty of having a forfeit there one week and we've had a couple against us and, and we've played once. So, yeah, it's, yeah, I don't, know. I don't know what the solution is. I don't know what the answer is, well, but I think, a, a, you know, a bit of communication between the clubs and a, and a bit of, you know, might have to, you know, swallow a bit of pride and go, oh, hold on a second. Let's, you know, let's make it work for the, for the good of the sport. Absolutely. You know, great minds, mate. Great yeah, minds. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But uh, well, I saw both of these games, the women's oh. state league games on the weekend, and they were they were both a, a fantastic affair. With uh, you know, Subiaco four defeated by where? Uh, sorry, East Fremantle fifteen. Um, that was a turn up for the books. The Rainier Premiers, you know, going down to a really slick uh, East Fremantle team who moved the ball, they passed the ball really well. And, uh, you know, um, Maddie didn't get 10 goals this week. She, I think she, what she put away uh, three each, but the, sh- the team just shared the ball around and everybody got stuck in. And I think Jess Kennedy was back this week from a couple of weeks in, yeah. the, in the Magoos. And, uh, yeah, you can definitely tell that, uh, you know, she was the, the commander, the general, uh, you know, making their, their plays happen forward of, of the half. And, yeah, they were, they were slick and really good. And Subiaco didn't have an answer for them, unfortunately. Well, Subiaco, Kate Hooper's been their main go-to. Mm. Emma Green there and Mitchell chipped in with a couple that are uh, with a single each and Bailey Eastman. But really, I don't want to... Were they one-dimensional? No Kate, no Subi? Um, I wouldn't say that. They were no Kate, no Subi. But they, they just didn't have the, the defensive answers for... The ball movement of East Fremantle, I thought they, and then when they did look like they had a handle on the ball movement, you know, um, Maddie dodge from the bottom corner and score a goal, you know, um, and yeah, and I think up forward they just moved, didn't have that same sort of zip about them uh, moving the ball around and trying to make holes in the East Fremantle defence. Um, yeah. So yeah, one of those one of those games. It was yeah, a bit of a bit of a surprise when I saw it unfold, but it was a great game to watch. Um, even though yeah, you know, Subi only put four away, you always, you always thought that they were in the game. Um, but yeah, East Fremantle were just dominant. Conversion. Yes, absolutely. But uh, yeah. for Subi, Echo Bailey Eastman put two away. Uh, singles to Emma Green and Erin Mitchell was for East Fremantle. Tegan Brown this week popped up with a bag of five. She got um, jealous of Maddie. <laughs> yeah. Well, that just just shows you the um, the, the goal spread here of, of five to Brown. Um, Maddie and Jess Kennedy both got three each and doubles to Courtney Johns and Emma Graham. You know, there's um, multiple goal scorers and also five multiple goal scorers there, and there, there would have been a few singles in there as well. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. they they really spread the spread the workload, and it's hard to defend against against that kind of yeah. against that kind of play. The alarming part for a lot of the opposition. Seeing that name, Courtney Johns, she dominated last year. So starting to see her come into form, East Fremantle would be happy. But in the other match, Bayswater 15, nice score there, mate. Defeating one of June Lap 8. This is where the 2-2 came to its fore. <laughs> yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I can't speak high enough of the, of the Bayswater girls. Uh, you know, and what they've been putting together over the last... Uh, you know, sort of um, four or five years, uh, uh, you know, under coach Lou Shields, they've they've had a core young group and they've had a couple of experienced players there who, you know, they've just been working hard together every week, having a great time playing the game. And they haven't had the wins and losses, you know, that, that they would have liked. But now their core group is, is you know, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. There's a couple of youngsters in Veronica and Emma and there's another couple of youngsters they're rotating through. You know, to give them the experience, they're really starting to come to the floor. And I tell you what, they were slick. Uh, they were really slick with their ball movement. It was bang, 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 goal. You know, from from defense to offense, bang, 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 goal. They were they were really slick. And then, 
you know, to get somebody like with a talent of uh, Chloe Tatlow back, you know, from her college season in America. Oh, she had three. So, oh. that, yeah, that experience would just flow off onto the Absolutely, teammate. absolutely. She'll attract the best defender, you know, every week and she's still creating and, you know, putting three in the back. And I, and I tell you, it's one of the – well, I really enjoyed watching her. She, she had a dodge sort of lean back, low to high, and it's the first time I've, I've really seen um, – you know, somebody with the skill in the women's game to shoot, you know, from low to high, down around her ankles, up to the top corner. And she shot an absolute rocket into the top corner past the goalie. It was so good to watch. Um, I was really impressed. Um, Chloe Tatlow fan club sign up, just talk to Chris <laughs> White. Um, because there were um, some others in that game as well. I like oh, Fraser with four. Emily Adcock, you mentioned, um, coming through. She had three as well as Chloe. Yep. And Veronica came with another couple as well as Skyler Levy. It's it's all there, you know. Um, yeah. oh, that's all the young girls coming to the fore now. They're really starting to gel. And it's, and it's great to see. They're going to have to suck their lumps up throughout the season, I'm sure. That's a phrase but, you don't want to hear. No, it's a, you know. A bubble tea? You know what I mean. No, I don't. Um, you know, they're going to cop their lumps. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they're going to have, um, you know, weeks where they're, you know, they have half a bad game because they're young and that's what happens. But they put a four-quarter effort in on the weekend and that will become more and more regular with experience. It was great to see. But uh, for Warner June Lup, uh, Bailey Rose Keenan put away three. Uh, Maddie Antelope, uh put away two um, with, a, with a standout goal scorers for Warner June Lup. So, um, yeah, watch this space. You know, it might not happen this year, but I think the, the Baser girls are on the march. Now, just a reminder before we get into the ladder and goal scorers, if there are any ladies out there that would like to jump into the studio and do a women's segment, uh, more than happy to hear from you. Um, plenty of space here, and we'd love to have you on the show because our first broadcast, thanks to um, East Fremantle, I've got the updated women's fixtures after the cancellation of the Sixers and all the other jigging around. Um, Sunday, the 25th of June, down at Phoenix, will be our first full day for the Women's State League. Later, though, E3 Mantle, Subiaco, despite that loss, um, sitting in second place. Wanneroo, Junlap, Bayswater in the mix, Wembley and Phoenix, who, interestingly enough, the talk, amongst the ladies was how good this Phoenix side is, but they've not quite been able to put it on the scoreboard yet. No, unfortunately not. Um, well, no surprises with the goal scorers. Maddie Copeland with uh, 28 in four games on that at mass, but that's seven a game average. Yeah, you take that, wouldn't take you, that. That's not. That's not bad. <laughs> And courtesy of her five, Tegan Brown now draws equal with Ash Iron on 13 in second place, a whole 15 behind. Mate, this week's going to be uh, going to be interesting. Yes. Uh, we've got Subiaco taking on Phoenix. Um, you know, hopefully the Phoenix girls get on the park this week. And, you know, Subiaco will be stung after that loss to East Romano, so we might find them on the march. Um but uh, you know, Basie got Wembley. That's going to be another another ripping game. The Basie girls could have a another W to their name there. Um, and Wanneroo June up East from Anil. That's again going to be another yeah, interesting game because the Wanneroo girls, I think, will will bounce back. You know, after they lost to Basie, it's uh, yeah, again. I think it's a tight competition here as well. No, absolutely. And just a couple of points spread across the table there. Um, for the Women's State League. Good luck to all the ladies this week. I believe they're down at Phoenix. So head on down to Good Child Reserve Sunday for the women's. I made sure I checked where they were based on last <laughs> week. I know where they are. Yeah. All right, so congratulations to all the juniors, all the women involved there. The Pirates, lots of love there from Kylie and others online. If you've got a shout out, or a thought, jump online and let us know. You can be part of the show, which is proudly brought to you thanks to our broadcast sponsors, ID Athletic, who it's so not, who do all your sporting apparel and club merchandise needs. Um, speaking of which, a big shout out to Mel and me, Jane, Melissa Jane. 
Melissa Jones. Uh, winner from last week. Yeah, she's mm. now got the first ever merch pack giveaway and thanks to East Rare for delivering that because um, she enjoyed it, Mel did, definitely. Fantastic. So thanks to Idea Athletics and Vision Decor for their continued support. If you need blinds, curtains, awnings or vinyl floorings, Vision Decor. All right, mate, let's get into Div 3 because there's disappointingly just one game out of three played on the weekend. Yeah, that, that was yeah, all to do with my little rant earlier about the about the forfeits there. But, uh, yeah, no, unfortunately, um, yeah, want to read up. up. Um, had the buy and Bayes, Phoenix forfeited to Bayswater and Subiaco forfeited to East Fremantle. So the only game was Wembley 9 and defeated Alcamos 5. We had Sam Ramsey, who uh, I saw today at work and uh, he enjoyed my tutu. Um, <laughs> Stephen Smythe. Well, did you wear it to work today? No, no he, was at the, <laughs> he was at the game at Wembley. <laughs> and uh, David Buller with two each. Uh, and what do we get there? Oh, Allen. Dave Allen, Matt Collins, and Russell Vallis. Always oh, one there for Wembley and that win over Alchemos. But for Alchemos, some common names coming up here. Simon Danby, he had two Brad Smith, Jack Mullen, and Chris Ford, uh, all with singles to make the five for Alchemos. Div three there, look. Elkamos in the mix. We'll have a look at the ladder because the forfeits we've spoken about that. Uh, Wanneroo, Junlup, Wembley, uh, both on three wins. E3, Manor, Elkamos, both on two. So tight field here in Div 3, mate. Yeah, look, given the nature of the, the Div 3 competition, uh, anyone could win on any day, whoever has. It depends on who has the cattle on the, on the park, you know. 10 or 12 yeah, players. Yeah, yeah, 12. You get a break where you got 12, Nelsie. <laughs> yeah. but, um, dare to dream, mate. Dare, dare to, to dream. dream. Yeah, no, but the, the disappointing thing about this grade this year is, you know, um, four teams have had to forfeit at some stage, some multiples, you know, which is really disappointing. There's, you know, three teams who haven't um, that I'm aware of. And, um, yeah, let's hope we can turn that around and, uh you know, we'll get on the park and uh, play a few games all across. But the goal scorers, though, Nolsey. Uh, We've got uh, Simon Danby uh, turning back the clock. Well, he, he's, he's on eight for the season. You then know. you've got Luke Grootveld of East Freeman all sitting on seven, while Smith, Walker and Lachlan all tied on six. So low scoring affair in the men's big three there. Mate, turning back the clock. It's a long way from one end of the ground to the other when you're old folks like us. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, look, this week Phoenix have uh, taken on Alchemos, Wanneroo Junior playing East Fremantle, Subiaco uh, playing Bayswater, and Wembley with the bye. Well, your match of the round this week you have to be Wanneroo Junior up East Fremantle, 1v3. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, East Fremantle could be deadly. Uh, depends on, on again who they put on the park, but yeah, they've got the core of a really strong, strong, experienced crew down there. So, some love from Kylie for Simon and Elkmos Pirate King. Uh, well, he was a big driver in the early days of, of getting Elkmos, uh, you know, up and running. So, uh, it's good to see him still playing and uh, you know, enjoying his time up at Elkmos. Well done, Simon. Um, so look. We'll move on. Div two I might actually have dinner before midnight for you tonight, mate. Hey, how good? <laughs> we'll see. All right, in the men's division two last week, some close games. Wembley six defeated by Wanneroo Junlup seven. Fraser Gill for Wembley with four, and John Nambi, uh, Nabi chipping in with two. Good to see the young fellas having a crack in there in the division two. We talked about the challenge there last week, stepping up from juniors to Div 2. Um, while for Wanneroo Junlap, Salvatore Kochi and Rowan Panton with uh, two each singles to Luke Thomas and Jack Duckworth. Yeah, and in the other game, mate, uh, East Fremantle 13 defeated Bayswater 1. We had uh, Matt, I won't do the Lou and Run Du Bois with four. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story behind that. There, there is a story behind that. 
Uh, that's a story for another day. Catch me at the ground, people. Um, I'm just giving Matty a hard time. No, he's a quality lacrosse player and he's probably too good to be playing twos. Uh, but I know he's got a lot of travel on this season. I'm just giving him a hard time because I can. Uh, no, he's a good, he's a good guy. Um, Lockie Wills <laughs> and uh, Tyler Sprunt, the uh, young guns in that team with uh, three and two to Bucky, Wayne Bucky Curran. Again, turning back the clock. Good to uh, see Wayne down there. Yeah, good to see his arm out of that sling and him back on the field having a run around. And uh, Paddy Oliverson uh, decided he was going to uh, wrestle a goal off his from Adel, And uh, he put that one in the cell. Good on you. Well done there, Paddy. Paddy. Um, just before we move on, there's another comment there from Kylie. I didn't. How do we purchase a jumper like this one? Well, glad you asked, Kylie. Thank you. I am putting in an order very shortly, viewers. I've got a couple on of shirts on order. If you'd like a hoodie, just get in touch with us through the page. Uh, just, I believe I haven't looked at the prices, but I mates' rates fifty bucks for a hoodie like this. Why not? Absolutely. You know, I'll have to get myself one of those, Nosey. Yeah, I'll have to get one for you, mate, uh, because of all the great work you do here on the show. Um, all right, looking at the goal scorers, it is Lockie Wills of East Fremantle leading on 11 goals, but impressively here, 10 assists sharing the ball around Lockie Wills. Yeah, smart player, head up, you know, always looking for that pass, and when it's not there, the biscuit goes in the basket. And for the record, I did get that into the commentary a couple of times. I did hear that, and I, was, I did come home and click on the... Uh, the show and I, I did uh, I did quite enjoy that one, mate. Well, done. I felt a bit silly when I did it, but I did it. No, mate, I I've got to be honest. I've stolen that phrase off um, a couple of guys who do a podcast about Division Two lacrosse over in America, uh, the college lacrosse called In the Crease. They do a great podcast available on Spotify. There we go. There's a plug, boys. Yeah, there you go. It'll be ten bucks, thanks. Uh, Matt, don't do the Lou and Run. Uh, Devoy with ten. <laughs> Carlos Brun on ten as well. Both sitting on in second place there and Fraser Gill coming up through the ranks sitting on nine this week sees Wembley take on Bayswater top uh sorry battle for um points here not much between them percentage wise mate can <laughs> Daisy Div 2 get up yeah I reckon we might be able to you never know we're gonna, we're gonna win one somewhere along the line funny interesting fact Nolsey those uh four names you've got in the goal scorers there uh three of the four young fellas there leading the Divi two goal scored uh played yeah. in the state under 18s team uh coached by one matt devoy in the is the forward line coach for that state team yeah, not a bad just gone there you go some impact there all right uh one of june up up against these three men in the battle for top Although looking at percentage, you'd have to imagine these three men will all need to win by at least twenty to <laughs> to jump Wanneroo June Lap either way. Yeah, I think I think I mentioned last week you got most of Wanneroo or half of Wanneroo June Lap State League team last year playing in that twos team this year. So I think they're gonna to be too strong for East Fremantle, although you know, you never know you never know what happens in uh, in this funny game of lacrosse. Funny old game oh. it is indeed. Yeah. All right. We're coming towards the end, so Kylie, I um, the one with the anchor. I'm upset now, dear. dear. <laughs> you can get uh, you know why though. We're becoming friends because I'm joining her as a Collingwood supporter. Some of my teeth are falling out. Oh, but... I didn't notice that second head growing till just now, Nolsey. <laughs> <laughs> No yeah, comments no... on the <laughs> AFL's 19th club entry. Um, all right, men's state league. Some big performances here. Bayswater one defeated by Subiaco eleven. Chris Patton, the sole goal scorer for your boys. No info available from uh, Subiaco though. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I was uh, around to see that one. Uh... Saturday afternoon, and um, yeah, Subiaco was just too strong. This defense is very good with uh, Fidua Barton in the net, and you know, uh, Ashby Dennis with his yeah. pole, and a couple of other poles he's got around him. Uh, young Somerville, and the last name escapes me, but they've been playing pole together for a long time now in state league, and they're very tight at the back. 
making it yeah really hard hard for our boys to get through the defense although you know yeah I, I, they're, More, they're a strong yeah. defensive side i think i think there's a violin playing there maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I look, no, I think I think was a bug, Subi, if, get in the bug. if Subi are, if Subi are going to uh, you know really challenge in the four this year, I think they've got to be able to put you know more goals in the yeah. back of the net. Yeah, um, you know um, to really challenge one or a junior like Wembley and East Um Otherwise, I think they'll sit solidly in in fourth, and that'll be about all she wrote um, there. And um, yeah, Bayswater had a howler of a day. Uh, well, Phoenix didn't have much of a better day going down to Wembley, who upset by the loss to Wanneroo Jim up the week before, mm. um, defeating Phoenix 22-5. Six to Matt Wood, five to Lucas Wood, and triples to Alex, um, Alex Brown and Ben M, who I should know. Benny Muxlow. That's him. Benny Muxlow. Oh, I hope ben. those three were long pole goals too. I love a long pole goal. Uh, well, Ethan. Anyone will know that uh, if I'm on the sidelines and you've got a pole, I'm telling you to score. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, okay. Well, let that one through the keeper or into the back of the net either way. Ethan Moyer continuing his good form with two for Phoenix. And in the broadcast match, mate, it was pretty close. 9-10 at three-quarter time, I thought, game on here. Mm. Not to be a three man or powering on six goals to one in the last quarter, running out victors 16-10 over Wanneroo Joomla. Then Bowwater was a late inclusion. He was out, then he was in, then he was out. Injured, did a fitness test and passed. And thank goodness for East Fremantle because him and Cam Evangelo Obviously, married wife working for Cam, both with four for East Fremantle, two to Charlie Warren, and four to Blair Coggan of Wanneroo Joomlup, who came in and had a big impact, I thought. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I saw some of your broadcasts yeah. then, old Ian. Yeah, I, I was surprised by the by the, the way East Fremantle ran over the top of Wanneroo in the last quarter. Um, but that's lacrosse. You go to sleep for five minutes, and all of a sudden, the, the, the good team. Will run straight over the top of you. Yeah, three to Jordan Gillespie, Jaden Rodriguez as well, and Lockie Walker being the general, just standing at top centre there with four assists, setting it up for his side. It's got a big tournament coming up in a in a few two weeks. weeks. Two weeks, I think. Oh well, nationals is two weeks. Yeah, today. no, the, the Aussie boys the aren't playing in the nationals. Yeah, weeks. yeah, yeah, three or four weeks away, and uh, yeah, he's got the uh, another really. I'd set of five games in a row. Yeah, none of the Aussie players, I think, are playing in the Nationals this year, Nolsey. Okay. Yeah, uh, too close to tournament time to risk, I think, them playing four or five games on the on a row. So, oh, you well, want to risk their injuries there. You want them fit and firing for Australia in the World Champs. Well, the schedule for the Nationals came out today. If you want to see that, check out the Cross Australia, um, their website and Facebook page, both with those. Details for the men and women. We'll come to that in just a moment. Uh, ladder, each three men undefeated on four. Um, Wembley in second with a better percentage and just one win behind. So Wembley up against these three men or this week. It will be the broadcast match, top of the table clash. Mm, that's that's going to be one to see if you. Uh, Going to presume, Nolsey, you have Wembley first because they're at home. Correct. This game at Florida. If you're anywhere near Florida Oval, people get down and check that one out. That's going to be a barn burner, an absolute stormer, I reckon. Um, yeah, you got to see that one. I, I couldn't even tell you who's going to win. I can't. I couldn't tip that one. I couldn't separate it. I don't think. Yeah. No, no. Well, if you can't make it in person, be sure to tune in live Saturday. That game at three thirty. Not a night game. I've enjoyed a couple of those and I'm back into them in a couple of weeks. But this one back to normal at 3.30 um, because they've got the Australian, West Australian, Australian representative blazer presentation on at Wembley after the game at 6.30. So head down if you can. Wanneroo Joomla up against Bayswater. 
Subiaco touch, I think, will be a close one. Subiaco, as you said, struggling to find goals. Subi uh, Phoenix with some young blood coming through and some overseas talent. That'll be a tight one, Ozzy, I reckon. be interesting to see this week if... Uh... Because now the college seasons are winding down over in America. It'd be interesting to see if anyone pops up with a uh, an import or two. Let's let's keep our eyes peeled for that one, people. If you do see any out there, let us know, everyone. All right. Well, uh, goal scorers for the men's state league. It's pretty um, clear who's on top. That is Matt Wood of Wembley with sixteen, Jordan Gillespie and Lucas Wood of Wanderer, Junlap and Wembley, respectively, both on 13. Ethan Moyer, uh, 11. And Mitch uh, uh, Mitch Kennedy and Ryan Hockey of East Fremantle, both on 10 there. Um, okay, top of the table, Clash, your neutral, Whitey. Oh, I can't pick him. Oh, yeah, I'm going to sit on the fence, clearly, <laughs> with that one. Uh, but that's, yeah, I was going to be too close to call. Right. Well, before we move on to the club news and interstate news, big shout out if there's any commentators called Jason Ridgey Ridgewell available for the commentary in that broadcast, feel free to let me know and you're more than welcome back in the van. <laughs> He's been turning into a bit of a cult hero just like you, Whitey. Oh, why not, mate? Get in there. Uh, anyone who's... Uh... You know, has the uh, internal tenacity to get up and have a crack like that. You know, you've got to take your hat off to him. Well, yeah, you'd, well, I was at the football Sunday, Hills football, and there was a young man called Joshua who jumped in the broadcast van with us. He has his own little um, YouTube channel about transport. He's on the oh. spectrum and he plays all abilities football. And he jumped in and he's got the... Uh, tenacity that you referred to because as we were wrapping up he's pretty much done the sign off for me that's a wrap everyone <laughs> um, i yeah. took that as my cue <laughs> uh, but, uh, i'm done i've been superseded by the uncle and off we go i uh, know well hang on craig allen chucking oh big 40th birthday so wow. ridgey's unavailable happy i can't believe he's only 40. mate happy birthday ridgey Yes, 40th, I tell you, how good. <laughs> I wish I was 40. Uh, <laughs> I vaguely remember my 40th. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I know what I was doing. I was recovering from my back surgery. There we go. There you go. Five years ago. <laughs> there we go. Anyway. All right, well, thanks for the heads up there, Craig. I'll let you get onto the recruiting there. Um, all right, let's move into state because <laughs> um, there's not long left to go till we wrap up this show we head to victoria results last week camberwell 10 defeating my beloved chadston 7 mcc on a roll 17 defeating altona 10 in a close one williamstown nine over up and coming malvern side there nine eight footscray 10 eight over brunswick and in the final game all close ones it was Caulfield. On me, I've got the hiccups now. Caulfield five, Eltham four. I think I'm going to have to jump the fence, Nolsey, and jump on the Melbourne bandwagon. Uh, they've got the net minder that we had, uh, Roger Chan, in uh, in the net for them. Okay. These the... days, he was uh, playing at Bayswater with us last year. And a bit of an injury interrupted season, but I hear he's uh, started off really well over in Victoria and it's having a ripping season. So good on you, Roger. Uh, yeah, well done. And there's a few WA players. I saw Isaac Cahill um, playing for Footscray as well now. So yeah. that's the star started line up out there at Footscray. Uh, What's the ladder look like, Nolsey? Well, as a result of their great recruitment, MCC and Footscray both currently sitting on top with 4 and 0, Williamstown in third, 4 and 1, and then Malvern, Eltham, Camberwell, Brunswick. Caulfield, Eltona, we keep me up, mate. Sorry, Hill. Uh, sorry, sorry, Park <laughs> and Chadston, both to hit the scoreboard yet. This week, mate, we've got uh, Caulfield playing Eltham, Camberwell playing Surrey Park, Brunswick v Altona, Melbourne versus the MCC. That's their first year back in the State League, and they uh, seem to be doing all right. They're definitely doing all right. And uh, Chadstone are taking on Eltham. 
Well, it's a good chance for Malvern who are trying to get in um, some good form. They're competitive. I know on the ALN updates each week, Malvern constantly get in a bit of a rap. A chance for them to have some impact against MCC. Leading goal scorers, and it was interesting doing a comparison between the states. Tyler Reynolds of MCC sitting on 18. Isaac Cahill, former City Echo boy over there in Footscray now, currently sitting in third on 15. And for the ladies, buddy? The Williamstown ladies, 16. Footaway Newport, 7. Camberwell, 5. And defeated by Footscray, 23. Well, they're undefeated, Footscray. They are yeah. 4 and 0, mate. Big impact yeah. there. But on top in both men's and women's undefeated yeah. Footscray. Having a good season. Followed by Williamstown, Newport, Melbourne and Camberwell. And this week it's Melbourne up against Williamstown, Footscray v Newport. And that will mean that Camberwell having the week off in the Women's Victorian State League. Um, interesting, we've got Maddie on, what's she on, 28? I think so, yeah. Off the from top memory, of head. yeah, mm. from memory, and Tegan and company on 13. But it's Miriam Suarez Jury of Williamstown leading the Victorian women's goal scoring with 19. She was over here for the recent under 18s tournament representing Victoria and uh, uh, came away with all the chocolates again. She's a uh, yeah, very fine young player from what little I've seen of her in that tournament and uh, online the tournament the year before. Watch that space. Well, I have a creep there coming through, Victoria. As we move closer to WA to wrap up, we head into South Australia, and I'll just sneak that down so I can see hey. it. <laughs> uh, in the men's competition, Burnside 4, Woodville 6. Let's tag team these. Sturt 5, Geelong. Uh, uh, Geelong. Geelong. You got, just because you beat Geelong <laughs> last week, you get Geelong on the brain. Sturt 5, Glenelg, 11. And East Torrens, Paynham 2. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough as North Eagles had 21 on the board. And with the ladder, Nolsey, we've got the North Eagles 3 0, Glenelg 3 and 1, Brighton 3 and 1. Uh, Tight there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Woodville, Sturt, and Burnside, and East Torrance, Farnham. Uh, is that 0 3? Yeah. Jeez. There's a bit of a separation there halfway up the table. Top and the bottom. Yep. A bit like things over here in WA, actually. But yeah, uh, yeah there we go. Next week, we've got the North Eagles playing Brighton, uh, ETP v Sturt, Woodville v Glenelg. And Burnside have the buy. Yeah, the match of the round there in Adelaide, surely North Eagles up against Brighton. Mm -hmm. uh, winner probably going to take top of the table there, I imagine. Fantastic weekend of lacrosse coming up, Nolsey. Yeah, absolutely. And for the women in South Australia, it was Burnside 6, Glenelg, or should I say Geelong 12? No, I <laughs> no, mean no, Glenelg. Is that allowed, is that allowed? 12. Uh, Sorry, uh, I just wanted to get on the bandwagon. North Eagles for the Eagles are losing a lot this week. Uh, <laughs> defeated by Brighton 18. That, that was funny. I think I got my horse on the corner. And the women's ladder in South Australia. Um, that's what we're doing, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, that's what uh, we're doing. Yep. Sorry, I've got distracted. Bright, yeah. shiny things. Uh, Brighton on top, 4 and 0. Glenelg, 3 and 1. Burnside and Woodville, both with one win, two losses. And North Eagles um, continuing the theme at the bottom, unfortunately. <laughs> and this week, I believe Friday night's Woodville v Burnside. Is that right, North? Yes, mate. Yep. And uh, then we have uh, Glenelg, Brighton, and North Eagles have the bye. They'll enjoy that, no doubt, because they won't be losing. <laughs> All right, so just a couple of comments there. Craig Allen thinks it's not his 40th. I didn't think he was 40. <laughs> I reckon his son's almost 40. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It did seem sus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just a smidgen. That's uh, all right. <laughs> and in other news, as we... Wrap up the show. Last chance to uh, let us know if there's anything we've missed. But in some news, unfortunately, mate, the Asian Pacific Lacrosse Union, APLU, 
announced recently the cancellation of the Queensland uh, Pacific Sixers. Mm, that's disappointing. Due to lack of numbers, going back to what we were talking about, team registrations not where they needed to be. Yeah. Um, and that was set for the Gold Coast. So it would have been a great opportunity to showcase lacrosse. In the, yeah, well, that was down for November. It's a nice time of year to be on the Gold Coast too, November. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, okay, while well, we have an opportunity, I've seen plenty of these messages across the socials. Applications are currently open for, or nomination applications are currently open for the 2024 under 20 women's Australian team. Um, they close next week, so you need to get in. If you want to be a part of the women's under 20 Australian team, nominate now. Check out the Cross WA. Or of course, Australia. More details on that. Stick your hat in the ring, and uh, you know, even if it's just for a bit of experience in the trial process. You know, have a crack. It's yeah. great fun, mate. I tell you what, East Fremantle, uh, the local clubs, they yes. a quiz night on the third of the sixth at six thirty. Support Ryan, Sam, Tim, and Kim on their way to the World Champs. San Diego, mm. here they come. Um, well, Wanneroo June Lap. Elder Curry night last night. Uh, oh, sorry, I stand corrected. They had an Indian food and chocolate mousse night. Not sure how they go. Interesting combination, to... but hell, why not? I don't understand why there's not more fat Indians out there. Indian food is just so good. <laughs> I digress. Uh, I but well done to them, everyone. Hopefully, you enjoyed a nice hot uh, Indian meal last night after training. Welcome, Osno News. Phoenix, however, have they must have been inspired by the Indian food night. They're having a sausage sizzle tomorrow night after training. Why not? So get all the there. boys at Phoenix get down. Mate, uh, Wembley are holding the Brazer presentation for the men who are going away to San Diego. That's this Saturday uh, at 6.30 for a 7 o'clock start. It will not be streamed. Ignore the next line. I will. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I believe there's a door change there. Uh, I'm going to presume, and I might be a bit presumptuous, but uh, I'm pretty sure there's raffles and things going on, and the proceeds will go to the gents for their for their trip away. Don't worry. I've already got the winning raffle ticket, so I'll be taking over the 500, thanks to uh, Wood and... <laughs> what is that? To, Hang on. Oh, it's just a wrap. Oh, oh, wow. oh, jumping in. Oh, I'm like Elkimos jumping in with roast beef and gravy. Oh, oh how good. Not bad at all. And, uh, well, for Wembley, uh, Lockie Griffin uh, had his state league debut. He did last week. Day, Congratulations but... there, Lockie. And uh, Alex Lewis uh, played uh, Div 2, young young up and cover. The Alan oh, Tangle Me Tongue. Again, only twice tonight. Feels how good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Alex is a yeah young young up and comer who uh, played in the Thunder team last year, who unfortunately went down to the Braves in the under 15s national tournament. So this will be his first year he's eligible to play seniors, and he's jumped in uh, for a game of the twos. Excellent work indeed. No news out of Bayswater or Subiaco. Late breaking news, Nolsey. I found out this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> Uh, in the planning stages for a, a fundraiser down at Baysy, watch this space late July. Um, they like to get behind fundraisers for things like MND and all sorts of. We've had, uh, you know, the Purple Bra Day yes. down at Baysy. Bay, I've had this three times. So you commented, you got me going. You did it. I did yourself. it, yep. Uh, yeah, Purple Bra Day, the drive for MND. Um, Baysy in the past has got behind, yeah, a number of. of fundraisers for different different things over the journey and uh i think we've got a new one coming up oh watch this space more news to come well speaking of fundraisers since you put that out there i am an ambassador for the mswa ocean ride uh in the month of november ride from Fremantle up to hillary's to raise money for mswa I'm looking for bike riders, so if you fancy a leisurely cruise on a Sunday morning, hit me up. Oh, a leisurely cruise? Well, that's all I'd be doing. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you do something like this last year, Nulzy? 
Yeah, I've been yeah. an ambassador for five years now. Yeah, I remember seeing on your socials you were doing a ride of, of some description. There were some cheeky suggestions because of my MS. I do my exercise, I do my kilometres on an exercise bike. Right. People have suggested I get one of those kiddie caravans and just hook up behind someone. <laughs> But I wouldn't be that mean to make someone tow my delicate frame around. <laughs> oh, and what a delicate frame it is, Nolsey. Um, <laughs> last thing, speaking of fundraising, there is a Lacrosse WA wide fundraiser. It is this Sunday night for the women's WA state team, a uh, movie night. Very good. Down there at Reading Cinemas in Belmont. Uh, tickets available, and we'll. I can see Craig Great say there yep. there are still tickets available for the presentation as well. So, absolutely, tickets available for the blazer presentation and the women's state team fundraiser movie. Maybe I do. I don't know what that's about. Maybe I don't. Maybe I do. Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. But we definitely do care about you and everyone out there. And as always, we've talked longer than the hour, so... I'm shocked, Nolly. We were a few minutes late due to my uh, tardiness no, arriving this evening, no, but... No, that's okay. And I talked a lot. Yes, we tend to do that. And for some reason, footy came in. Hawthorne defeating West Coast, in case you didn't know, last week. I've got to take what I can get. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and Freeman will get enough over Geelong. Look, that's about it from us. Thanks to everyone who's joined us throughout the show. It has been a good one. We would not we would be remiss if we didn't do this just one more time. Each and every week we say, each and every week we mean it. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, be nice to yourself and take care of those around you. Just like these two did on Saturday, give your, give your teams a shout out. Get out, support your clubs, whatever it is. Local clubs doing it tough, Whitey, not just in lacrosse, but all sports. So. Absolutely, mate. Oh, before I forget, I, I will say that there was eight eight players and one of the coaches. Oh, hang on. I cut oh, your head off there. Oh, oh, cut my head off. Oh, that's all right. Uh, I've got the second one popping out the side by now. <laughs> um, there was eight, eight state league men's players and... One of the coaches down supporting the ladies on a Sunday, which I thought was great to see. Excellent. Yeah. So, well, well done to those guys. Um, that's exactly what it's all about. Whitey, where are you this week? No clue, but I'm going to finish up at the state league game at Warrior June Club. Okay. <laughs> I believe. I believe. Uh, I don't know where I start. Well, I start at Ashfield for the for the young fellows under eight soccer. So that's that's just fantastic to watch the young ones run around and do that. But uh, I'll be off to another two or three games across after that throughout the day, just for something new. I think I'm going to have Sunday off. I've got some chores to do in my shed, so uh, I might be spending Sunday in my shed. Well, this Sunday I'm down at Ardross covering the Fremantle Rebels softball tournament featuring Team Singapore. So looking forward to that one. Fantastic. But before then, three thirty this Saturday. Nolsey and an unknown commentator yet to be determined will be at Wembley for the top of the table clash as Wembley take on East Fremantle. Till then, take care, stay safe. On behalf of Whitey, I'm Noel Nolsey Johnston. Thanks to our sponsors, ID Athletic and Vision Decor. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you Saturday at 3.30.